Hi, this is Dr. Jerome Fryer, and uh, this morning when I was getting ready, I shaved my eyebrows off. Yeah, I did, and I didn't even mean to. I didn't check the, you know, the depth. You know, you know, I I shave here, and then I thought I was like, wow. So my daughter fixed them up for me a little bit. So got a little makeup on this morning. It's a first. I want to talk to you regarding a recent publication in JMPT. To me, it's a masterpiece. And it was something that I wanted to do years ago, um, giving us, um, uh, you know, it, it's about the, the synovial joint, in particular the synovial joint and the hyaline cartilage. And the roughening of the hyaline cartilage, we know that osteoarthritis is extremely prevalent. And we know that most of the patients coming in, is, the, the pain is related to osteoarthritis, whether it's the subchondral bone or the, you know, degenerative disc disease, uh, you know, and the facets are approximated and we do things to create better space and better biomechanics to reduce symptoms within the joint. <clears throat> my, my research goals <clears throat> are to understand the hydraulics and how we can better deliver our treatments, our manual treatments, whether it's manual treatments or prescribed, you know, proper exercise, you know, at a certain time, certain frequency, certain load, that sort of thing. How do we optimize? <laughs> the reason why I chuckle is because the hyaline cartilage, I think, grows just as fast as eyebrows. <laughs> so... Everything is in, well, I don't know. I'm just guessing. But hyaline cartilage is an avascular structure, and it slowly regenerates from the, from the, uh, there's a, there's, it's called actually the tide mark. When histologically you look at the interface between the subcondral bone and the hyaline, in the hyaline, there's a, there's a tide mark because the, 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 the vasculature kind of comes up to that line and then beyond that. And so above that, there's, there's uh, very little vascular, well, there's no vascular supply unless there's little fissures and little vessels tend to migrate up inside there. But then, you know, that's the interface where the nerves exist too. I think it's very similar to the basivertebral nerve <clears throat> where you get end plate fissures and you get the basivertebral nerve kind of, you know, penetrating a little deeper into the end plate. And, uh, but anyways, this, this research uh, is, you can see here, a little reflection, but award-winning. And what they did was they they stuck little vibration sensors on the back. They looked at the lumbar spine, looking at crepitus, like little, you know, how it kind of, uh, you know, as the joints move, there's vibration as the hyaline cartilage kind of rubs, and you know, over one another. And what they found was... Uh, this is common. A lot of patients will report this in their neck. They'll say, yeah, I can hear crepitus or, you know, that sort of thing. But not very common because it's so far away from the ears, right? So what they found was, and, you know, it makes sense, uh, that increasing age, more noise. What I think is fascinating to me is that, which I kind of gathered all along here, is that with manipulation... When you manipulate the joint, <clears throat> when you gap the joint like this, the sound is reduced after manipulation, which indicates that there is increased joint space width or the, the, the pressure within the two articular surfaces aren't as much. And, you know, it may be temporary, <clears throat> but I think we got to look at the long-term effect of that and how that may change the dynamics of the joint um, to improve and promote 
regeneration. I'm hoping this is going to regenerate. <laughs> so, but this model, this is one of the models I created. It's a hybrid split model. And when this research just came out here, I thought, you know, well, I've been using these models for, the, for a long time now. And this one's unique because it's actually, I created it with a, uh, there's a, a normal on this side, good disc height, about 12 on the front, 12 mils, 10 on the back. And on the other side, we've got, there's a degenerative specimen, which is, uh, so it's a marrying of this model and my LXH. And interestingly, on the degenerative side, if you approximate the facet joints, I don't know if you can hear that, I can feel it, but it, it actually, there's some crepitus. And if you go to the other side, very little crepitus, because I've created a polished surface on this side. So this model can be helpful in explaining those kind of little grinding sounds that people experience and also what we're trying to accomplish by way of our treatments. So this is called the hybrid split, which I'm quite proud of. This shows neo innervation into the disc. You can see that nerves actually grow in. Um, you can see the core in here as well. So 